Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting into your homes. Well, we're in the third week of lockdown and I'm wondering how you are coping. Um, I decided to um, do this video because there are some people who are not coping very well with the lockdown. And so it's causing a lot of deaths and I was wondering whether or not they were considered as corona related deaths. Anyway, if it's the first time you're passing through, please click the thumbs up and you must share because with the, with the lockdown, there are so many vloggers. And so YouTube is no longer sharing videos with subscribers. Subscribers have to go searching. So, but if you share, it will keep me visible. So I'm hoping that you'll do that just for me. And um, yeah, apart from that, yeah, let me get on with what I want to talk about today, which is about lockdown murders, suicides and other corona related deaths. Now, the Daily Mail reckons that 150,000 could die an unavoidable death during the coronavirus pandemic pandemic through depression, domestic violence and suicides. So you have to ask yourself what causes people to either feel suicidal, to feel depressed or to want to kill themselves or they want to kill others. Well there's a series of things. There's the financial worries which is usually the worst. The fact that you may not have money to buy food, look after your family, pay your bills, pay your rent, pay your mortgage. That is the most vulnerable people can feel. And that is one of the main reasons why people either get depressed or just go over the top. Um, there's also the disruption of routine. Some people are, you know, um, really rigid in their routines. You know, and if they don't have a routine, they don't know what to do. They don't know how to manage their day. And it can really disrupt them and make them feel uncomfortable, frustrated and angry. You've also got loneliness. Those people who were fine living by themselves and now they're no longer living by themselves, but it's almost like self-isolating. It has a totally different connotation. The difference is where before you were isolated, living by yourself, getting on with what you want to do. And if you felt like going out and seeing a mate, you could. But now you're in isolation. You're living by yourself, but you don't have the option of going out and seeing a friend like you would ordinarily to break that loneliness up. So you've got some people who cannot cope with living by themselves and the actual reality of not being able to get out and have that break. I mean, I was talking quite amusingly of people who had lovers who, you know, they had their, they had their main squeeze, as they call them, but on the side they had lovers to break up the monotony and now they can't get out of the house to their lovers to their side pieces, to whatever you want to call them. Um, and then you have those people who see no hope in the future. They look at the coronavirus, they look at the people dying, they look at the economy, they look at the fact that the job situation is dire and they think it's not going to get better. What am I going to do? And that can tip them over the edge. The thought that, you know, the negative vision that they have about our future and we've just heard that the lockdown is going to extend for another three weeks. That will take us nearly to the end of May. Um, and there's also um, some kind of talk about why the um, coronavirus is totally different in the UK and USA, as opposed to how it's affecting other people around the world. You know, there's something about that which I think adds to people feeling uncomfortable, adds to people feeling paranoid, adds to people being vulnerable. You've also got no faith in people's ability to get through this. Some people just don't believe they're going to get through it, whether it's because they're going to get sick, whether it's because they feel as though um, 
they just can't manage it, they're not mentally stable. It could be a number of reasons. And like I said, you've got those who have existing mental illness, those with existing mental depression, you have those with medical problems, you have those who are already who are addicts of some sort and they're unable to get their fix. And so they take it out on spouses and partners. And sometimes if they haven't got a spouse or a partner, they take it out on people on the street. So coronavirus killings. Man stabbed his wife to death because the lockdown got too much. A builder shoots his wife and children because his work was drying up. A man bludgeoned his wife to death. He had the virus. She told him to leave and he just bludgeoned her to death. Um, four people and a dog were found dead in a house in Sussex. Man killed his wife of 44 years marriage in South Wales. Three died in murder-suicide in Hertfordshire. Mum of three was stabbed to death outside her home in South Yorkshire. Grandson murders his 82-year-old grandmother. A 19-year-old girl commits suicide because she's worried about the social isolation. And we have 16 domestic abuse killings in a three-week period. And lockdown has been extend extended for a further three weeks, according to the country. Counting Dead Women Project in UK, where they've seen it's the highest in 11 years of deaths due to domestic abuse. Um, at the moment, we've got 103,093 cases in the UK. We have 13,729 deaths. Global cases, there's 2,193,673 deaths cases. Global deaths are 147,384. Recoveries are 555,594. Long-term lockdown will cause more deaths due to mental illness mainly. Um, so it's not only going to be due to the virus. The virus is going to naturally kill some. But some of these corona-related deaths are caused by things like murder, and suicide. Um, it's not yet understood why the pattern of the coronavirus, like I said, in the UK is so different from other countries in the world. What is driving higher deaths in the UK and USA? Um, so is the coronavirus re um, creating violent men because it's impacting more women than it is men at this time? Um, Domestic abuse is on the rise, physical, emotional, financial, sexual, and psychological. Um, and like I've said in past videos, I, I work at one of my departments or one of the sections that I work with has a lot to do with domestic abuse. And the domestic abuse is getting worse. It used to be where a man would hit a woman and, you know, or knock her down or whatever. That was bad enough. Now they're getting sticks. They're getting all sorts. They're doing all sorts to women, breaking their noses, breaking their, their, sh their shoulders, breaking their legs, damaging their ribs, cutting them, using scissors, suffocating, you know, till they're almost dead. I mean, it's got so extreme. And most of these, the domestic abuse is drug filled. The perpetrators are on drugs. With the lockdown, if they can't get their drugs and they can't get money to get their drugs and they can't get access to their drugs because of lockdown, the people are going to suffer the most other people in the house. Sometimes these addicts, they attack parents not only spouses, anybody who is in their space who won't give them what they want. It's really, really sad. So um, a woman is killed by a partner or ex-partner every four days. This is according to the, um, what did I call that? Oh, where is it now? Women, women who are dead or something. 
Counting Dead Women Project. Yeah, Counting Dead Women Project. So women, women is a woman is killed by her partner or ex partner every four days, according to Counting Dead Women Project. Um, the number of women killed by men over the first three weeks since the lockdown is the highest it's been for 11 years. Police are arresting perpetrators of domestic abuse women. And um, we have to ask, we, and we know why domestic abuse has increased. Um, and suicides. It's loss of control, dependency, money. Sometimes you have women and I'll talk about women for now. I know men do get abused, but it's at a lower rate than women. But sometimes the woman is in this country and her husband, not her husband, well, her partner has brought her over. And she's not legally in the country, so she can't work. So she's totally dependent on the husband. Sometimes you have situations where um, you have a husband and a wife and the wife is forced to give the husband all the money. You have the elderly who are forced to give up their pension to abusive husbands. It's not a pretty picture. Sometimes when we think about our lives, what we're going through, you do not really, you cannot comprehend what some people go through. And it's exacerbated during the lockdown. We have to count our lucky stars. Yes, it's difficult for us financially. Yes, it's difficult for us. We get bored. Sometimes if you're working from home, well, I've started working from home. I found it more busier than ever. I found that they're giving me more work to do and my concentration, sometimes I don't even get a break. And I'm supposed to finish at four, but yesterday I didn't finish until after five. So, and that can cause me uh, more stress because I feel like I need to justify what I'm doing more because I'm working from home. So that puts more pressure on me. But for those people who are not working from home, for those people who don't even have a job, you know, we have to still be grateful because you do have people in abusive relationships where they are trapped and you could well say, why didn't they get out? Sometimes for the, the reasons aforementioned, you know, whether it's a dependency, that the husband is the one who is doing everything, providing for them, and there is no escape. Sometimes, the, you know, especially in these large families or, you know, close-knit families, there's nowhere to go. Everybody knows everyone. And so they, and the thing is, the refuges, the refuges, refuge, centres are closed. I was going to say refuge and refugee. I got a bit confused there. But the refuge, the refuge centres are closed. In a lot of cases, you know, for health reasons. So it's not like the person who would normally just turn up at a refuge can do that. But I am going to give out some um, set resources so that anyone who is suffering at the hands of a violent man in particular, and I'll also have one for men as well, um, can get support or something. But, you know, this increase in deaths and domestic abuse since the lockdown, it's terrible. Before the lockdown, these women could probably escape. They could probably go and stay with family. They could do something. But can you imagine being locked up with an abuser? Can you imagine? It must be the worst nightmare. And then, like I said, sometimes abuse is not just physical. It's mental. You know what? An, emo an emotional abuse. Some, some men, they will ignore you and they just cut you off. That's emotional abuse. Or sometimes a man will just um, criticise and taunt you and just try to get you angry or try to provoke you. Sometimes it's financial abuse. Sometimes It can be so many different kinds of abuse. Sometimes it's sexual abuse. You have some of these men, they force their wives to have sex three or four times a night. Some women might like that. But for those who don't, they don't have a choice. And sometimes these men force them to do things they don't want. 
to do. So you have people in those situations that are stuck in the house under lockdown and at great risk of harm. So we also have those people where you've got unruly children, the schools are closed. Okay, before you could get rid of the kids for a few hours and get your head around things or you could get to work and you could have a break. But can you imagine having unruly children, especially if you've got more than one or two? They're making noise and they're screaming and they're eating out all the food and, and goodness knows what. And you don't know whether you're coming or going. You, you tell them to go to their room, they ain't going. They're just there nagging and shouting and goodness knows what. That can be stressful. Shortage of supplies. You're going to the shop and you can't get what you need. That can cause stress. And, of course, there's no outside relief, no outside entertainment, you know. So, you know, you're stuck in this kind of situation where before you would get a periodic release, you're not getting any release. And for some people who are fragile, that can tip them over the edge. And like I said, people with mental issues, people with autism, people who are bipolar, people who are schizophrenic, all those kind of situations, you do not know when these people are going to switch. Some people just sit at home and they just think and think and think until they go crazy and they convince themselves that what they're going to do is the best thing to do and it can be really damaging. You don't know what people are thinking while they're on their own. You don't know what they're planning and scheming while they're on their own. All you know next, all you all you hear is somebody's been murdered, or somebody's committed suicide. So where do you go to get help? Well, we have the Angelou Partnership. I've never heard of those before, but the telephone number is zero two zero eight seven four one. 7001. That's 028, sorry, 0208 They're open Mondays to Fridays, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. We have the Woman's Aid. The Woman's Aid is an online service. I don't know how an online service can help you when somebody's beating you up or you need help. Not unless that you pray that they don't kill you and when the husband's gone to sleep or, or, or done drunk himself stupid or whatever he's done, you can go online and write your concerns. But I cannot see how that can be safe in, in a lockdown situation. I can't see how that can help you really. But maybe it's got resources to help you. I haven't been on it, so I don't know. I'm just thinking of those people who are desperate. What can they do? I guess you'd have to call the police. The police are even in this coronavirus um, pandemic, they are arresting abusers, domestic abusers. So you can call the police. Um, so Women's Aid is www.womensaid, one word, .org.uk. Or you can email info, I-N-F-O, at womensaid.org.uk, org, O-R-G. UK. There's also this app. It sounds quite interesting. It's called Bright Sky App. And it's meant to reduce the risk of domestic violence. You download it and it allows the victim to record evidence of their abusive relationship. It allows them to seek professional advice. You can take journal entries, you can take videos, you can take photographs. And it can be sent to a designated email address and then you can use it to send to the authorities later on. This sounds quite good because sometimes it's just good to get it out. And, to you know, you can't talk to anybody about it in this time, but maybe just by journaling and writing down entries on this app, it might help ease the burden if the situation isn't too tenuous and too severe. Um, You've also got the National Centre for Domestic Abuse. Their telephone number is 0800 970 That's 0800-970-2070. And I think I said the app, Bright Sky app. 
Okay, you can um, look that up. Okay, we've also got the men's advice line. That's 0808-801-0327. Um, the email is info at mensadviceline.org.uk. We've got the National Stalking Helpline, 0808-802-0300. They're open 9 a.m. in the morning to 4 p.m., Monday to Friday, and Wednesdays 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. I say they're open. I mean, you can actually access them by the telephone, of course. Um, Modern Slavery, 0800 one seven zero zero. If you're a victim of modern slavery and you want to get on their referral register, that's the number you call. We've also got those who are in forced marriages. They can be um, victims of domestic abuse. Um, then that number is zero two zero seven zero zero eight zero one five one. You've got action on elder abuse. That number is 0808-808-8141. And then we've got victim support. That's 0808-168-9111. So that's 0808-168-9111. And last but not least... National LGBT. Their number is 0800-999-5428. And their website is www.gallop.org.uk. And Gallop is spelt G for golf, A for alpha, L for lima, O for Oscar, P for papa. So don't feel guilty, upset or angry because you're feeling um, depressed and lonely. It's natural. The fact because your whole routine has just changed, but it's just about keeping it under control and using positive affirmations to get yourself through it. If you don't have positive affirmations, it's going to be extremely difficult. And it is hard to think positive during such an unsettling time and an uncertain time. Um, some people will feel abandoned, they'll feel betrayed because they're unable to access people, they're unable to access loved ones. And some people, whereas the religious facilities was their support and motivation, they're unable to access them. So that can make them feel vulnerable and isolated. So encouragement and motivation is important wherever you can get it from. There's lots of ways to get it. I mean, even if you're on your own, there's lots of YouTube videos that can help build up your strength, build up your courage, build up, build up your inner voice. They've got some about your inner voice because what you're telling yourself is what's going to bring an outcome and it can be the difference between how strong you are and how weak you are. So just try and look and see, you know, how to come overcome depression, how to, because sometimes people can't afford counsellors. And so if you can't afford a counsellor, they do have YouTube videos about depression and about all the different symptoms that you might be experiencing and telling you how to get through them. It tells you how, I mean, a lot of these um, videos that may be talking about domestic abuse, they may be telling you before the coronavirus about, you know, trying to seek help, go to a women's aid, go to a refuge centre. You can't do that now because you are locked down. But try and do the best you can with the information you have. And that's all for now. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye bye.